Hi, I'm Brian Whitens. Welcome to Discovering. He's been in our living rooms every Monday night for the past 30 years, showing us the wonderful people and places that make up the Upper Peninsula. Join me tonight for this special episode of Discovering as we sit down for a conversation with Buck. I'm going to miss that uh, contact with the public. I met great people. Uh, you know, all I have to do is just look, you know look at some memory tapes and. Uh, it brings back great memories. I don't even need to look at the tapes to bring back the memories. That's all tonight, right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forests thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. Black Bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Across the Upper Peninsula, from Ironwood to Drummond Island, from Copper Harbor to Menominee. If you mention the word Cornish, it's automatically followed by pasty. If you mention the word deer, it's automatically followed by season. And if you mention the word buck, it's automatically followed by Lavasser. His name is synonymous with the UP, and he's been a huge part of all of our lives for over 30 years. I had the opportunity to sit down at the TV6 studio and talk with Buck about himself and the show. Well, Brian, back at the uh, the end of the 1970s, uh, I was working uh, I was working uh, doing a lot of sports, and it, which was pretty exciting. I was doing news and sports, but uh, I was doing mostly sports, and nobody was doing anything on hunting and fishing. And I said, what, "What's wrong with this uh, sports department?" So I went ahead and uh, started doing uh, first programs and. Uh, actually, this is a scene from the, the very first program, one of the first. In the other areas, well, there's still hope. Increased demand for forest products could open up new territories, and habitat management programs could be stepped up, providing the public is interested. This scene here was back in 1979, and I did a series of programs during the summer. It was called Upper Michigan Outdoors. And I tell you, I loved it. I, I really enjoyed, and they gave me freedom that week. And I went to Isle Royal, and you know, I did a number of different segments. I did June, July, and August, and then, of course, it went away. So the following year, I said, I want to continue with this. I do not want, I don't want to just uh, do this three times a year. I want to do it all the time. So I went to management and I said, uh, boy, I'd like an outdoor TV show. And they looked at me and went, ah, what are you, crazy? But I kept up, I persisted, and I persisted. And lo and behold, what happened is I applied for a job in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. They were looking for a guy to do an outdoor program. And I said, hey, that's neat. So I called him up, well, I sent him a tape, and he called back right away and said, well, you got to get in here. We got to talk to you. And I said, okay, okay. He said, but we got a problem. Uh, our station is owned by Post Corporation, as is yours. And I can't go and steal an employee from another Post Corporation station without getting permission from the general manager. And I said, okay, well, you talk to him. He didn't want to give me an outdoor show, so you talk to him. What happened? <laughs> he said, now, wait a minute, uh, if he wants them so bad, I guess we should have them. And that's how the whole thing started. The 
theme song came from uh, uh, an acquaintance, Mark Mitchell, and I asked Mark if he could write a song that would kind of uh, just capsulize what living in the UP is all about. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. You know, the, the secret streams that flow, you know, beneath the cliffs of colored stone. You know, it all fit together perfectly and uh, it, it, was, it was a great match. And he did a great job on it. Just a wonderful job. The trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure. Discovering as I see it, and, and through my lens as I showed it, is a celebration of life in the UP. And it's not just a shoot them, bang, bang, catch fish all the time show. It's uh, finding the unusual in the people. But I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Again, going back to the people. You know, every day, you know, some days, some days you drive home and you, you have on your mind how you screwed up that day, uh, especially when it came to wildlife. I mean, you were filming wildlife, and I just loved to film wildlife, and it was obvious throughout the years. And uh, I remember one in particular were sharp-tailed grouse, and I wanted to get them dancing. I wanted the best video of sharp-tailed grouse dancing that anyone had ever gotten. And I worked on it. It took me two weeks, every morning, going out. It could be freezing, and you're out there three hours before daylight in a, in a pop-up blind, just sitting out there. We'd, I, a lot of times I'd bring my son, and we'd be wrapped in sleeping bags. And, and uh, towards the end there, I finally figured out exactly where they danced every day. And so I hit a microphone right underneath them, and I got perfect sound. You could hear the the uh, the rattle of the sharp tail. The ch -ch 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 -ch. It, it was great. I mean, all the way home that day when I finally got it, I'll tell you, I I have I was having a hard time steering the wheel because my chest was so puffed out that I had succeeded in finally getting it, and I was I was so happy. I I had to go right to the station and throw it in and just look at it and go, all right, I did it. And those days, those days, I, you can't trade. You can't trade a day like that at all. Just, you can't. But I think I put close to a million miles on in just the UP in 31 years. Um, boy, places. I can't think of a place I haven't been. Uh, I really can't. Uh, some people say, well, you don't even need a map. Well, sometimes I need a map. I'm not that good. But uh, as far as a road map, unless it's a two-track somewhere, uh, don't even bother it. I don't need it to travel in the UP from Sault Ste. Marie to Ironwood and from Copper Harbor to Menominee. I've been, I've been to all of them. And I think I, think I have, I, I really did fall in love with the Keweenaw. And I think it showed in some of the latter years, uh, some of the stories that I did were coming from the Keweenaw. And uh, I had a lot of good friends up there, and uh, they'd give me tips on places to go and the things that are going on. And that was the other thing. You know, people were so great, and, and uh, they'd call and ask, you know, Do you, would you want to cover this? Or would, and, I, and I would beg every year for deer camps. And every once in a while, you'd get that winner, you know. Not all of them were perfect, but I'll tell you, every once in a while, you got that winner where you just left smiling, saying, that was pretty neat. Like Solomon Tadeucci, you know. He was a character. Uh, my back just gave out, and it's a fact of life. And with that back giving out, uh, there wasn't much I could do. I couldn't hold the camera on my shoulder anymore. Um, I couldn't walk 
very far. My balance was going bad. Uh, just a number of things happened, and I I met with um, you know the one of the best, uh, well the best um, uh, surgeon for neurosurgeon in Marquette, and that would be Dr. Kosha. And he said that uh, the only way we can straighten you out is it's going to take one heck of a surgery. And uh, he said, I'm going to talk to uh, Matt Songer, Dr. Songer, who is about the best orthopedic surgeon. And he's the one that, uh, that came up with all these uh, rods and screws and the technique of putting them in someone's back. And he's really the one that initiated it years ago. And um, so I, I was in good hands, and uh, it ended up I had three surgeries, and probably the hardest part about it, other than just, uh, you know, it wasn't very comfortable, was the fact that uh, I was laying in a nursing home during November 15th, and that was the toughest thing. That was tough, real tough. In fact, I wore this shirt that day, November 15th. I wore the shirt. I said, well, I can't be out there, but what the heck, I can still think like I'm a hunter. So, didn't get out. Oh, and then, then this guy who's a, he's a nurse there, he's an RN there, he comes in, he's got his pictures. Well, he hunts up in the Huron Mountain Club, and here he's got these two great big monsters. And I, oh, I said, don't show me those. I don't want to see them. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Well, how many times have you said to yourself, this is the summer, I'm going to pack up the canoe and head for Isle Royal, and you never got around to it? Well, sit tight in your living room, because right now we're embarking on an Isle Royal adventure. I'm going to miss that uh, contact with the public. I met great people. Uh, you know, all I have to do is just you know, look at some memory tapes, and and uh, it brings back great memories. I don't even need to look at the tapes to bring back the memories, but you know, I have memories, uh, and I got a pretty good. I got a pretty steel trap yet for for a memory, and I can remember a lot of people, and they'll say, "Do you remember that old guy that you had on?" And I'll think about it for a second and say, "Oh." Oh, yeah, I know who that was. And, and come up with the name and they'll go, what, oh, jeez. Uh, I, I met and lost a lot of good friends over the years. And uh, I guess this is the kind of program, this is the kind of uh, career where you meet these great people. And you meet the Solomon Tadeucci's and, and uh, the Casper Rantas. Oh, the big one got up, but he was so thick, but we fired oh. anyway. You know, we were hit right, but they won't go through. Tricky, tricky part. And then, you know, you went, oh, you caught see the horns, you know. Oh, but boom, but boom, boy. But uh, he said, Johnny, uh, Johnny said, boy, uh, your shots are perfect, but couldn't go through. People that you just, you just don't meet every day. And, and the sad thing is, is if I would not have captured some of these people, like John Volker, because maybe one day I will catch a mermaid. And finally, not because I regard fishing as being so terribly important, but because I suspect that so many of the other concerns of men are equally unimportant and not nearly so much fun. You know, John's been gone now for quite a long time, a couple of decades now. And if, if I never uh, would have uh, sat down and captured him, on film, you know, there wouldn't be that memory. There's a there's a reel of film that we gave to the historical society. That's, you know, it's 1,200 feet. It's it's a big reel, and I hope they put it to good use, because um, you can't go back and do it again. You know, the man was uh, he was quite a quite a character, to say the and a great author, great, just just a wonder great youper. Can't say enough good about them. You know, get out and enjoy the great outdoors is sort of a um, uh, sort of a phrase that a lot of people have used. And 
I don't know. I, I, I just thought it was appropriate for people to uh, think about it anyway. That uh, the, real, the real God's country is outdoors. It's not in your house. And I, I really would like to see more people get out and enjoy the great outdoors. And no matter what you like to do, you know, even if you're a berry picker, you know, get out. Get out and enjoy. Uh, the outdoors is a great place. And the UP, you know, it just, it doesn't get much better than here. Uh, you know, I've been to Canada and I've been to a lot of spots there that are beautiful and, and the fishing's great. But, you know, you can find the same thing here. And if you, if, if solitude is what you like, there's plenty of places you can get that solitude. You know, I used to, when I was strong and and young, I could backpack the Porkies. Uh, I could backpack Isle Royal. I could backpack Pictured Rocks. And all these places have just tremendous viewing spots, uh, uh, solace, just quiet, uh, wildlife. You know, I've seen so many things over these years, and all of it was focused on the UP and just what a wonderful place it is and it really is it's the best it's the last of the best and we are we are very lucky to be able to live and to have made a living here it's not always easy but uh, I think the Upper Peninsula is by far the most beautiful place in Michigan uh, Richard Smith and I we work together an awful lot and you couldn't have a better friend, you couldn't have a better uh, knowledgeable person to work with, especially when you're talking wildlife, deer, bear. Yeah, the first moose lift, we went out, I think it was 85 and 87, and it was a thrill of a lifetime to see that helicopter come in with that moose dangling. And uh, I was just very glad to be a part of it, you know. I wasn't you know, I wasn't an intricate player in anything. I was just a guy there trying to cover it and do the best I can and to, and to keep people updated on the moose. And, uh, yeah, the moose, they were, they've been great. They've been fun. I got some video of a bull moose in Barriga County. I think you'll enjoy it. So until tomorrow night, this is Buck Lavasser saying, get out and enjoy the great outdoors. Working in the television business, I've always respected and have been amazed by what Buck has done and what he has accomplished in doing it. There are very, very few outdoor shows that air 52 weeks a year, and not many I can think of that have lasted for over 30 years. I'll certainly be staying in touch with Buck, and you can bet you'll see him from time to time on the show. I've only known Buck personally for about a year and a half now, and I'm deeply honored to call him my friend. He has influenced the way I shoot and edit video, and certainly the way I put together a show. He has influenced the way I see the UP, but that started long before I knew him. He has captured the people and the places of the Upper Peninsula on miles and miles of film, only to deliver it back to us in the form of discovering. Buck, you've created not just a show, but an important piece of the Upper Peninsula. You've left a huge pair of sorrels to fill, but I'm proud to follow the path you've set. I talked with a friend of mine from out of state a while back. I told him about my role on Discovery, and he asked me what it was about. I told him about Buck, and all that he'd done, and the amazing things he'd accomplished over the years. I told him that Buck described it as a celebration of the people and places of the Upper Peninsula. He said, but what do you think? I think there's no place on earth quite like the Upper Peninsula. Rivers from big and wide to the smallest hidden trout streams. Bordered on three sides by the crystal clear waters of the greatest lakes. Giant white pine, aspen, and hardwoods right in our backyards. A place where you're never more than a mile from a lake or a stream. And November 15th is a holiday. 
Tales about deer, bear, grouse, ducks, bald eagles, and loons. Hunting, fishing, trapping, camping, and two-track roads. Mosquitoes, wood ticks, firewood, shoveling snow, and cold winters. But even more so, it's about watching the sun come up from the solace of a deer blind and watching it set across a quiet lake to the sound of a pair of loons. It's walking through the fall woods, the sweet smell of aspen and spent maple leaves, telling stories at deer camp or around a tired fire, the smell of wood smoke, sitting next to an 8-inch hole in the ice with the warm sun on your back, the feeling of a 10-inch brookie on your favorite stream with no one there to see it but you. It's all of that for sure, but by far, most of all, there are a few hundred thousand of the most unique, hardworking, friendly, and welcoming people you could ever hope to find anywhere that make the UP a place to live. It's the people that make hunting more than shooting a deer, and fishing more than catching a fish, and discovering more than a show. And me? Well, I'm just honored and privileged to be a messenger. So it it's um, it's been it's been quite a ride, and I, I really wish that you give Brian every chance that you gave me, and help him out in every instance you can. And uh, I hope to see you folks soon. I really do. That old slogan has been with me for a long time, and it uh, it's still in my heart. Well, folks, that's it for this edition of Discovering. Until next week, Buck Levasseur saying, get out and enjoy the great outdoors.